Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, today I thought I'd do a sunset painting and I'm going to do this in acrylic paints. I was out the other night, took some cool reference. I'll have those, uh, those reference photos kind of pop up here, what I found, and just kind of inspired me to paint this. So let's just dive right into it. I've got acrylic paints on a 12 by 16 inch canvas panel. Let's get started. All right, now the first thing just ignore here is I've got a sketch underneath which I've decided not to use. So I'm gonna paint right over the top of this and uh, just kind of forget what's on here. So pretend we've got a, a nice clean canvas here. And of course, all the colors and materials, the brushes, things that I'm gonna be using in this video are listed in the description below. So just check below the video. I got everything there along with links on where to find them. And the colors I'm using, these are acrylic paints, of course, and just about out of yellow. So the colors I'm going to be using are titanium white, cadmium, or I'm sorry, carbon black, quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue green shade, cad yellow, and cad orange. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is think about the major colors in the sky. So it's basically gonna be, think of it as the sun, the immediate area around the sun, and then kind of the shadows high up in the sky. So I'm gonna like break it up into three pieces. So I'm gonna start with kind of the most obvious in my mind is the area around the sun. And I've got some phthalo blue and yellow, a touch, just a tiny bit of each mixed with some white. And I've got a paper towel and also a couple jars of water off to the side here. Closer to the sun, we're just gonna use yellow and white. Pretty simple. As I move further up towards the shadows, I'm actually gonna break this, I guess, into four parts, maybe. I'm gonna take some quinacridone magenta by the way, you don't have to have quinacridone. I think any magenta. I really am starting to prefer magenta over red. Red serves a purpose, just like this cad orange here as well. But, you know, it's just not the best always. It can kind of dirty up your colors if you're not careful. So for most applications, I'd like to use some sort of magenta over red. Got a little bit of orange in there. I like that color, and then we'll go right in to the shadows up above. Shadows are gonna have black, they're gonna have blue, they're gonna have a little magenta. Let's just mix those together. You can already tell I'm gonna want it more vibrant and darker. So a lot more blue and some black. Let's go ahead and add quite a bit more blue and then a little bit of magenta. I still think I want it more saturated and I probably want more of like a violet tone maybe. So just more blue and magenta. Oh, and oh well, let's just go with another color. Just really make this simple. Just kind of lay this all out so you can kind of see the major colors that I'm gonna be using for the most part. So say just take some black, not really any white. I've got some white on the palette knife and that's probably gonna be enough. So blue, black, little magenta, which is really gonna produce like a Prussian blue. I think Prussian blue is, it's like phthalo blue, black, and violet. So this is pretty close. You're pretty much creating like a, a dark blue violet. So something like that. And finally, what I should probably do, I'm gonna go ahead and take the ruler here. I just want an idea of what's gonna go on. Let's get a nice square. Oh, I suppose. This 
somewhere around there, that's, that's good for now. Let's go ahead and start. Actually, I think I'm going to take some glazing medium, add that to my palette as well. I'm going to start with this flat brush. A little water, a little bit of the medium. And I want to think about blocks of color, so I'm just going to kind of start by thinking about the, the major shapes of the sky. I want to sort of shape the sky out. What are going to be the kind of the major areas of color? And just block them in, super simple. Now, with that color on my brush, I'm going to go right into some of this blue tone. I'm going to mix that in and blend it into that color. I'm going to take some of this darker blue, mix a little bit of that together. but not a lot. Scrub it in over here. Okay, now I'm going to wash my brush. And dab it off a little bit. Pick up some of that medium. I'm going to grab this peachy color. Probably some white also in there. Just grab some of this yellowish. Maybe even a little more yellow. I just don't want it to be super vibrant. So just simple. Scrub it in, block it in. Kind of fan it into what I did below slightly. Don't need a lot, but somewhat blend it into there. And just a couple spots that might actually bring this color down lower. Give the idea of maybe a few of these pinkish clouds floating. Okay, so that's pretty simple. I'm going to pick up some more magenta. So these colors I mixed, some of this blue. These colors I mix are just kind of a, a starting point for me. You know, I manipulate them and change them as I go. It's just helpful to have some of this laid out already, pre-mixed. I think I'd like to have like a kind of a nice peachy violet color. That might be a bit too dark. So something like that, perhaps. A few areas. Again, I'm looking for the the most prominent. Looking for the most prominent color in any given area. 
not really into the specifics yet. So I just want to block it in with what I think is going to be the most common color for that area, for whatever area I'm working on. Might get a little orange. Mix it with some of this peachy color. And I think that color is going to be too dirty. So. Just mix some of that violet into this color here. Maybe skip the orange. I've already got enough orange in the mixture, perhaps. Something more like this. Take some medium. Use my fingers, kind of blend that together a little bit. Look how nice that, that blends. Okay, don't need to get too crazy with that. Wash my brush. Get some of the moisture out. Pick up some of this darker blue. A little bit of medium. And perhaps touch a white. Or out of phthalo blue. Add a bit more there. Touch a white and phthalo blue just to kind of increase the poppiness of it just a little pops out there's a little bit more there and somewhere right here i think this color can live it's going to be some areas over here i believe A little more white. Okay. Now take some of that color I just had, mix a little bit more magenta, create more of like a violet, brighten that up. Just so I can kind of blend these two together. A little bit of white with that color. Get some of this paint off here. A little more white. And magenta. So again, none of this has to remain as is. I'm just trying to get it as close as I can. It's always good to get it as close as you possibly can. Kind of the first go around just makes it perhaps a little bit easier on yourself as you go along. Try to keep it 
somewhat smooth. Okay, so yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna wash my brush. And take some of this dark color, add a little bit more phthalo blue to that. Some medium, more blue. I'm gonna go right all the way across the top with this. And then once I do that, I'm gonna take some magenta, some phthalo blue, little bit of this lighter colored blue I had before, and I'm gonna brighten that up. So we want that to blend into what I already have, just like that. Then, what I could do is go ahead and take another flat brush, a little bit of medium, and I can use this, it's a dry brush, no color on it, just to sort of blend these colors together a little bit more. Make that sky nice and happy. Pretty easy. Take a little violet, a little medium, open that area back up a bit, get kind of rough. Yeah, so good start to that. Don't need to do a whole lot more right now. That's a heck of a lot better than just a plain old white canvas. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this blender brush with a little more medium, try to blend this out just right there, make it a little more smooth. Take a little bit of that violet color. There we go. Looking pretty good. I'm just gonna leave that as is, kind of just move on now. Okay, and I'm gonna take a bit more of this violet color over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in the rest of this off to the right. Make sure that's covered up. A little more white, blue. I think I could probably go brighter. brighter with some more magenta, perhaps. Okay, now this right side isn't gonna be too critical right now as a lot of it's gonna be covered up with some clouds, but I wanna get that base down. So now I'm gonna move on to, let's just kinda of cover up the rest 
of this painting. So what I'm going to do down below, it's going to be a pretty dark background. I'm going to take, let's find an area to mix this and try to use up as much as I can here without wasting palette area. I want to mix some kind of dirty brown color. Black, magenta, orange. So something like that. It's going to give me a starting point. What I like about filling in the entire canvas early, jumping around, is kind of the same reason why a lot of people choose to tone the canvas first. It does give you a little different perspective on things once it's all covered up. You, most people tend to see the values better. But I say most people because sometimes it doesn't always seem to help me. I think everybody kind of sees things a little differently. So I don't think it's a blanket statement for all artists. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the bottom right there. And we're going to need some type of clouds rolling through here. Mix some white and black together and probably pick up some blue, some of this, maybe this dark blue black. A little violet. So I'll mix some magenta in there. So that's fairly close, and what I'm going to do is we're going to have some clouds living over here. And again, I'm still just thinking about blocking in. I don't want these things, everything, to be totally finished at this point. I want just the general areas, the general idea of di these different colors live in here. Take some magenta, maybe some yellow, and a little bit brighter. A lot of this I just want like the idea of this being here. The clouds might actually be bigger, but I kind of want to know where they're going to be in a general sense. So this kind of just is my way of laying it on laying it on there. Just a little bit to start so I can envision what's going on. A little more magenta, maybe some yellow. Want this to be pretty vibrant here. And perhaps up top. I have some clouds living up here. I'm gonna mix some white. and some orange so we're going to get somewhat of a more dirty looking brownish color here and pretty quick i'm probably going to switch to a smaller brush i could probably just go ahead and do that now i'm going to pull some of this color off this brush here So I'm going to have some clouds living 
in and around this area here. And I'm going to get some more color to that. Cloud living up here. So pretty basic what I'm doing so far. Some more white and orange. Let's see here. Yeah, something like that. Kind of a dirty peachy color. Add a little bit of bluish. Kind of tones that back, makes it a little bit more on the, like the magenta, the violet side maybe, but desaturates it. And I'm going to have some of these colors living up here. So this is the struggle with a painting like this. Very difficult to get it to a place where you can start to see what you're doing. You have to start out with these kind of just these abnormal looking blocks of color and you have to kind of work your way towards what you want. It's really hard to explain. It's again, it's just probably best done just through demonstration. Okay, some clouds over and through here. And you know, the cool thing about clouds is they can kind of just float around and change as much as you want them to. So it doesn't have to be perfect at any point. You just got to get that idea down. You got to get the pattern down to kind of make things appear to be right. So that's kind of what I'm focused on right now. Just trying to get that pattern down. more magenta magenta and yellow probably move to the round blender brush that I like about at this point Wash my brush. And let's just go ahead and take some orange and white. With a little bit. Of magenta. I want it to be somewhat somewhat reddish maybe more like this let's just see if that is going to work for us
So I haven't really, so I'm just using this, like an angular brush. Add some more magenta into that. With some more orange, try to saturate that up a bit. Okay, so I, I'm starting to be able to to picture what's going on here. But not entirely yet. So what I'd like to do before I get ahead of myself with what's going on up here in the sky is work a little bit down lower, kind of get some of these colors that I want around the area of the sun figured out. I want that sun to be about, maybe about right there. Yeah, let's go ahead and say it's gonna be like right there. I might raise the horizon up just a tad. So basically what I'm going to start with, magenta and yellow. And I want to really think about, so if that sun, if that sun is going to be oh, about right there let's just put a dot so i kind of know where that sun's going to be i'm going to start laying in the idea of some clouds around the sun we're going to have a lot of bright orange clouds be a lot of yellow as well. Take some magenta here, mix it with some blue. Blue, white, magenta. Kind of get some of that orange off of there. So something like that, and start the idea of some clouds here. Darken that up a little bit, warm it up with some some of this orange color. 
dark it up a bit more. And I'm going to have some more cloud coming in from over here. Even darker. Kind of continue on with this cloud. I'll wash my brush. Pick up some black. Add some magenta. And yellow. Kind of create like a warmish gray. A little bit of pink in there as well. And we kind of use that color to blend these darker grays into the, the orange color. Like so. More yellow. A little more magenta. White magenta, just brighten that up a bit. Kind of do the same over here to the right. Blend these colors together. Kind of use some of that color for low in the sky. Blend that into some of the darker color that I was mixing up here. And as I darken that, I'm going to add some magenta. Because there also starts to look kind of greenish. You add magenta red, essentially. And kind of blend that into this cloud up above here. Okay, so notice I'm just jumping around all kinds of different places here. It's what I do with a lot of my work. Kind of allows me to build things together, check myself, figure out what I'm doing. So mix some white and orange up together. A little bit too bright, we'll try this right here. I'd like it brighter actually. See if I can't just squeeze enough white paint out of this, get it what I want. So pretty neutral, pretty neutral colors right here. 
but it's allowing me just to kind of blend this out. And I'm going to go back to kind of that dark cloud to the right and mix kind of some pinkish orange up, a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to apply that just to the edge of that cloud. I'm going to use that color to sort of blend my way to what I want. I'm going to continue with that theme, grabbing some more orange and magenta. Okay. And before I go any further, I'm going to get real dirty with my colors here. I want to create some nice bright highlights and start to work on some of the highlights. So another break here, I'm going to swap out my palette, clean everything up, new water, and we'll return in a minute. Okay, I am back and I think I'm going to switch to a filbert brush. We're going to try to get a little more controlled in our approach. And get some water and medium. I've got just the, the same colors lined up on the palette. And what I'm going to start with, I believe, is probably get like some highlights going. We're sort of, sort of building up to those highlights. I like to, to build from dark to light. But at some point, you know, you can kind of go back and forth from the darks to the lights. But in general, as I'm kind of get going, I like this uh, I like this kind of pattern. So I'm working my way to the brightest colors still as of yet. And I'm gonna start with. this yellowish color. Now I'm going to take some white and yellow and mix those two together. So this is even brighter. And eventually we're going to have some highlights right through here. Might have gone a little bit overboard. With that color. I'm gonna grab some more yellow. Touch of orange. Pretty vibrant. Okay, now as I mix this yellow towards some of these darker colors right here, if I keep going, it, as I said before, it's going to start to look almost almost greenish. Because, of course, if we mix yellow and black together, if you're familiar with your colors, that'll kind of create a green tone. So we don't want, we don't want green. We want more of an orange tone. And so you got to go a little bit more on the red side of things to get more of an orange look. So I'm going to start with this here. Yeah, something like that I think would give us a decent result. Some medium mixed in here. I'm 
going on kind of the back side of that yellow, blending it into the darker area. And I kind of use that color down low here as well. It's about the right tone. So you can see that right there is what I'm talking about. It starts to look a little bit green as we transition. So I pick up some magenta and probably just go ahead and make mix up some lighter gray here. Then add the magenta just so it doesn't darken things down too much. You see that? So as we lighten it up and we add more red, basically moving it towards the, the red spectrum, you can see how it takes that greenish hue right out of there. And that looks much more natural as we blend to that darker color. I take my finger here, wipe out the back edge of that, just blend it away a little bit. And you can see that is just a nicer transition so a muted pink, when you're transitioning to a darker color, think about when you're going from yellow to like a dark gray, think about a muted pink. That's gonna give you a good result when you're, when you're moving into those darker colors, maybe even blue, if you're transitioning from like orange to blue, that's such a hard, how do you go from orange to blue without creating green, because, or like say yellow to blue? without creating green. Well, think about pink, a muted pink. Just like this right here, add that muted pink and it's just a good transition color. Now, as I'm working on this, I'm gonna have some of this color down low in the foreground, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add that because I know it's gonna be kind of bright down on the uh, horizon itself. So start that process anyways. Again, it, it, it's about going from area to area to area, making little adjustments in each area, building it up together, which kind of gives you that good, solid idea of where you're going, where you're heading with this painting. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna even take it a step further. I'm gonna add like some, uh, some gray, some darker color to this. Because we're gonna have a tree line and that, that tree line will kind of hold some of the dark still. So we'll just pretend that tree line is going to live kind of right there. And that still just kind of keeps the separation going. All right. We are looking pretty good right now. I think what I can get away is some darker blue. I'm going to switch to my round blender brush, what I love so much. Pick up some white, and one thing we didn't get was phthalo blue. So I'm gonna pick up some phthalo blue. Super bright. Get some of the moisture off. And then I'm gonna pick up, this is, we'll have a little bit of yellow in it, so we're gonna give us Kind of a turquoisey color, more of a greenish tone. I th that's gonna be pretty close. Just brighten that up just a tad. A little white? No, maybe, we'll see. Yeah, 
that might be more on the lines of what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use this brush, light pressure, moving it quick, blending it out. So this is wet over dry. And when I want to kind of fan out some of the edges, I can just kind of do that with my fingers, but it's, it's not too important. So what you could do is just take some white, a little bit of this yellow color, kind of gives us that color that's already on there, and then you could blend it back the other way. So that's kind of how you create a nice smooth blend when you're working wet over dry. Pick up some of that white color, get a little bit in the brush, and then blend it backwards. So while it, the color you're laying down, while that's still wet, you can blend it back, kind of using a color that's similar to what's already down here. So that's that's looking closer. I think I could still get some medium. I think I could still brighten it up. So kind of blending it back again, adding some of these tones back in. I want to be careful not to get too green. So more white. Take even more white, blending it right back together. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Not bad. I think take a little more blue. Try to cover up some of this area up here a little more and kind of see some of that violet pink color underneath. Just try to block that in real nice. Fan it up upwards just a little bit. I want to kind of bring all that together. So taking some of this color and going a little bit high. Okay, it's looking good. I'm going to wash this brush. As well as this other filbert that I was using. And I'm going to pick up some white. Mix just a little bit of color in there. Kind of a peachy color. Magenta and orange. Okay. Just like what's already on there. Kind of refine a few things here. Some of that yellow I'm kind of getting rid of. And I'm going to brighten up some of this. A little more medium. 
I'm going to brighten up some of this blue through here. I want it to be just a bit lighter. Just back and forth, letting the brush do the work. So this is kind of creating just some very light pink clouds floating kind of randomly through this area. I don't want to press too terribly hard at this point because I could start lifting off. Some of that paint's not quite dry yet. Okay, I'm going to take some white over here and I want to mix just some more yellow into what I'm doing. So now is the time to really define everything. So it's basically I'm using what I already have on the canvas, what I've done up to this point now as like a template on where to go with everything. And so I can kind of cover up some areas like this because I know that there's going to be a cloud here. Maybe I don't want it to be that big. This area, this color that I'm going around with it and covering up some with it, starts to blend it all together. And that creates kind of a cool look. It brings me one step closer to the finished painting. You know, and then as I get really close to that sunlight, I can add more yellow. Brightening up some areas now. I'm really going to get careful about what I'm doing from here on out. Taking away that white, because at the end of the day, the only white that I want is where my orange spot's going to be. We'll cover that up. Want everything else to be slightly darker than the sun. Take some orange here. few spots here and there. Brighten up. <clears throat> Not 
bad. Just kind of thinking about some things here. Wash that brush. Pick up some magenta. And when you want sort of a more of a brick red, you can take just a little bit of black, add that to the mix. A little more black. Yellow. So using this dirty brown, reddish color to start to blend out a few of those, a few of those clouds up high. And probably use the same color to start to shade this cloud here a little bit. So this dirty brown is kind of a good color to shade these bright orange pink areas with. Again, it doesn't have to be the finished product. It can just get me one step closer. And, and, you know, I can already see just looking at this as a whole, it's it's looking good. We're on the right track. You know, the colors are looking good. There's just things that you just got to keep going back and working little by little by little at. It's such a tedious process. You just, you cannot ever expect this to go quick or go easy for you. Okay. I would like to lighten up, maybe take a little bit of that pinkish color. Lighten up a little bit right through there. That cloud was a little too dark for me. All these things are subject to change. Okay. Now, when I look at this, I'm kind of thinking like, what is, what is the the one thing in this painting that's you know most off? Still needs a lot of adjustment. One thing I can kind of like just notice right now is I'd, I'd like there to be a little more violet, maybe up high, so I could take some blue. So this is the blue we mixed from before. And just mix together some magenta with that. Create kind of some violet. And you know, I'd just like this violet to travel a little higher. Lift up some of these dark areas way up high. 
So just kind of pulling that out. Couple things I'm looking at over to the left here is seems a little bit too light, especially up high. Kind of thinking what might need to happen is just create some darker blue. This might work here. Let me just get a little water on my brush. Some magenta. Maybe more of like a violet, I guess. Looks like a blue, but really a violet. A little darker. Brings the the focus towards the center. Take some phthalo blue, a little bit of black, magenta, mix an even darker blue here. Yeah, see that rich, rich color going on. It's got a little more life in it than that dark blue I mixed up high. So the whole point of this is like, it doesn't have to be, you know, I'm not gonna make this painting absolutely perfect. I just, I want the colors to be correct more than anything. That's kind of what this is. It's kind of just like a practice, like a color, like a practice on color, color study. Trains your, your eyes to recognize what color should be where. How to go about things in a little bit more effective way. This is the practice I think that is so important if you're ever looking to to do something big and extravagant. Take some white, phthalo blue, some of this area through here. Use my finger and I just know it could be brighter. As well as maybe just include some more like violet Take a little smaller filbert brush here. I'm gonna kind of test that out here. A little more white. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll do. And I'm standing up now, just kind of Lean and back, trying to get a bit better view at what I'm really doing here. So I'm trying to divide up some of these clouds, trying to open them back up a little bit so we can see some of that magenta there behind.
I get a lot of questions on whether you could do this with oil paints as well. And I mean, I don't see it a lot. So especially if, if you don't have experience with oils, I think it's really confusing on the differences between oils and acrylics. I don't think there's much of a difference. Paint is paint. One dries faster, one dries slower. Uh, they, they handle slightly differently between each other. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's paint on a brush. But with that being said, it, the difference is because of the, the dry time, it, there's a, a higher risk. If you're going about this with oils in like the exact same way, if you literally try doing it the same way, there would be some sort of risk involved with, you know, they kind of blend together, become muddy. I'm layer the way that I'm layering, you would want to let the, the previous layer underneath the oils really dry. So I think the way that I do, I think the way that I do the, The blocking in portion could be about the the exact same, but when you start getting into like what I'm doing now, it would be tougher to do with oils the way that I'm going about it. You're going to want to be a lot more careful with how you're blending these colors together. I guess the, the order which you're doing it. You know, one way that you could do it is, oops, one way that you could do it is literally let each layer of paint dry. Go over it once, let it dry again, let it dry. Uh, that would take a really long time. But I guess, I guess it's, I guess it's hard to explain when, when I think about, okay, if I was going to do something the exact same way as oil paints, what I would do is lay out a, an underpainting, block it in the same way. And then I would very, very carefully, it would, I, it would be a slower process. It's kind of the reason I like to work in acrylics. It would be a slower process as you're working your way across the canvas. I'd basically carefully go across the canvas each time much slower, and then give it about a day in between. And I'd probably have several paintings going at once so that I could keep working. So yeah, the reason I do like these acrylics for something like this is just because I like to work quick. It's just what I like about painting. It makes things more enjoy enjoyable. It's kind of like instant gratification. You can get your way out of the, all the way to the end of the painting as quickly as you want to, as quickly as you can work. But I don't know, that's a question I get a lot. Can I do the same with oils? I think on a micro basis, yes, but on a macro, could you go about all of this in one day the same way? No, it would be it'd be tougher. I think though a lot of the a lot of the things I do can be transferred to oil paints. Once you get to know oils, anybody and I'm sure if you're listening, if you understand oils well, you know how to transfer it in your own way. So I think all the advice is transferable back and forth between the two mediums. It just takes an understanding of each medium before you can really get that transfer done well. Okay, so I'm just trying to mix a dark blue. And 
around, taking some white, sorry, some water. Get some dark blue here. more magenta go back to a round blender brush the round blender is really good for so many things and I love it but I've just been challenging myself you know the only way I discover new brushes the only way I Discover techniques is by trying different things. I could stick with the blender brush for a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things, but I like to go back. Like, you know, right now I've been on a real big kick with filbert brushes just because I want to get to know them as best that I can. Take a little water. It's hard to control these blender brushes. You gotta tap a little water on the canvas, on the palette, so you get a little moisture on the brush. You get too much moisture, it's, e it's easy to load these things with too much moisture. That's kind of the big thing about these. So it, it takes a, a good practice, a lot of practice to understand how to, how to control them. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my filbert brush, some blue and white, a little bit of this darker color, mix it in. And I go back in between these clouds. Little bit of magenta. Go back in between these clouds. Fix them up a little more how I want. So, like the good thing is, so what I when I back to the the oils. Right now would be a time when I could really finish this with oil paints and do it well without the need of like an additional layer. It's like this would be like a really good starting point for oil paints where I could just like right over the top of just about everything and get it exactly how I, how I want it to be. Um, but you know, for the purpose of learning, the purpose of this video, I kind of just keep going as long as I can. It's another question I get, when do I switch to oil paints? Well, when I no longer enjoy the process of acrylics, generally. Okay, I'm going to take just a quick little break. Kind of think about where I'm going to go next. And be right back. All right, so just thinking about, kind of had a chance to step back and look at this. I, I'd like that larger cloud in the center to come down just a bit. So mix up just kind of some orange, 
magenta, white, little black. Take some of this color and have some clouds over here of a similar color. Kind of the same color for this cloud. So this becomes super tedious at this point. Like it's so hard to try and figure out and explain what to do at this point. So anybody out there that's like, this is super hard. Don't get it twisted. This is not, it's not easy for me. It's just plain hard and What I've learned to do is kind of control myself, take frequent breaks. I guess just minimize the errors. That's one of the biggest things that I can that I can give for advice is try to minimize your errors. And you know, how do you do that? I don't know. But I think having that on the back of your mind is at least a step in that direction. So as long as you're just kind of con conscious about it. Minimize the errors. At least be thinking about it. How you might be, you know, maybe just think about the errors that you might think think you're making, errors you might think you make, and then make a, a mental note of those, and then try to catch yourself when you're about to make one of those errors, you know, and and it only comes with experience, you you know, you don't know what an error is unless you've made one, so. That's the other part of it. You have to make errors. It's the only way you learn. Only way you get better. You have to. You have to go through the hardships. And that's just kind of goes back to it just comes with experience. It's something you learn through trial and error. I don't think anybody can escape that. And one of the bad things I think about art school is that they try to teach that, which, you know, nothing wrong with taking a class whatsoever. But, and you can teach it, and that's fine. But you still have to experience it. Just because somebody's told you about it, you know, I can tell you all day long how to, how to get better at push-ups. But you're not going to get better at push-ups unless you actually do push-ups. So I can tell you all day long how to make your paintings better. Your paintings are not actually going to get better unless you actually make paintings. And you actually encounter those errors, make the mistakes. So that's just kind of my view. You know, you can't avoid the work that's involved is what I'm trying to say. You can, you can learn and teach and whatever all you want, but so, I don't know, it's another thought. How to get better at painting, just paint. So by showing by example, doing videos like this, you know, just kind of, talk it through 
with you guys. I think, you know, I don't know. I think motivation and encouragement and actually trying to do a painting like this, that's half the battle. If you can get yourself to just go, to just try, I think that you're much further ahead than 99% of people. Because most people just don't try. They think it's too hard. You're, they're not good enough. So I guess that's what I'd like to encourage you guys to do is, is to just understand that the majority of, of what I do is just the fact that I just keep doing it every day. I just keep trying. I have a lot of failures, a lot of micro failures that nobody really ever sees. But the fact that I keep coming back is how I keep getting better. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you want to get better, just keep trying. It's all you got to do. And if you're patient enough, and if you pick something to paint around that you're truly passionate about, you know, you'll eventually find your way. It may not be painting in a style like myself, but there's artwork can take on so many forms. Everybody's got some sort of talent in artwork. I mean, you know, you may want it to be realism, but maybe that's not where it, it, it lies for you. So just recognize that, you know, you can't paint like everybody, but you can discover a way to paint that makes you in demand, <clears throat> in demand and desirable, all those things. So yeah, I don't know, that's a little, uh, some deep conversation there for you guys. But really simple, <laughs> when you think about it, just keep painting. It's all I ever do. It's all I think to myself, and I'll just keep going. It'll work itself out if I'm having a hard day or if I'm having a really hard time in a painting, just keep working on it. It'll, it'll come together eventually if I work long enough on it. That's kind of what I've found. So, that's that's looking pretty good. You know, I in general, a lot of these clouds up through here are pretty rough looking, you know, especially this area. A lot of just kind of random stuff together. When you stand back far away, it looks good, you know, but it's really kind of sloppy. That is the stuff that, that takes a ton of time. And, I, you know, I might, that's the kind of thing that, I'll speed up the cameras for because it's just so hard to to do it in front of the cameras. It takes a lot of time to edit. But all it really is is me going back and doing the exact same process. So everything I've done up until this point, I will literally repeat over and over and over again until this starts to look more smooth. This is the nature, so that's where uh, oils really have an advantage over acrylics. You can do something like this with oils much quicker. Like I, if I dove in with oils and tried to smooth out that area, it wouldn't take terribly long, not nearly as long as it would with acrylics. And that's kind of get, gets to the, that kind of gets to the topic of why I switched to oils, because at some point, I can actually finish the painting more quickly by switching to oil paints. And so, you know, I will, cause that's kind of, that's just what I enjoy. At some point it becomes more difficult with acrylics and when it becomes more difficult and you know, maybe I won't enjoy it as much. And if I'm not enjoying it, you know, how am I going to do a good painting? So at the end of the day, it's really what it comes down to. Am I enjoying what I'm doing? And if not, would I have a better time switching to oils? And if that answer is yes, then, you know, I switch to oils and that's just kind of why. So, if 
Yeah, I don't know. Some other food for thought for you guys. Little clouds floating, just some white and yellow. Taking some of that color, reshaping some of those highlights. So I'll go back and reshape a lot of things. A lot of times. But that's looking it's looking pretty good at this point. I think that I think I could probably get away with some darker blues in the center. Maybe even more violet, so I'm just trying to figure it out right now. This is the part the tedious part I'm talking about just going back and forth playing with different things More magenta and water. I'll really end up spending a lot of time just right through this area trying to sharpen up these clouds. It's confusing. These little textures through here, they get super confusing. You can start to see as I as I break that up how it it starts to look better as a whole. You know, maybe it's still a little bit sloppy on a micro scale, but as a whole, things start to to take on a, a better form. little blue mixed into this, a little more magenta, some brighter pinks.
break up this cloud up here just a tad. Yeah, as a whole, it's looking good. Still just a lot of things in particular that I start to get a little fussy about. Couple areas of blue I could kind of reintroduce, darken this up. Take some orange, white, and yellow. A little bit of magenta. I'm going to have some of these air, these little highlights of clouds back here. I'm going to have them be brighter. So I'll introduce a little of that right now. A little more white and magenta. Carefully adding them. I don't want to add too much. A little white and orange. Even white and yellow. Still a little bit bugged out by... Some of these clouds here. A little bit of black, so I'm trying to mix kind of like a darker color. So I've got a lot of different colors going at once down here. And I'm gonna keep using them as I go through this whole area. So kind of mixing a lot at once right now. I think that I could probably bring in some of these, some of this highlight area, 
show you in a second. Some of this highlight area, I think I could just pull it in. Pull it in this way. Just like that. Pick up some of the yellow and orange. Add some of that. Pick up some of that deep red, orange. Use it to blend in that back edge. Mix some gray. Kind of blend that all together. It's not bad. So everything's starting to look pretty good for the most part. And I think I'm ready to move to area around the sun. Clean up a few of these clouds up here just real quick. Okay, looking, looking decent there. Take a quick break and come back and we'll wrap up the low area down here. Okay, we're back. Let's make this last one count. Now, as always, when I step back, I get to kind of peer at a little bit and I always start to make some different opinions and one of them was I think I could get rid of just some of this right through here just pull this pull this down a little bit and take some blue some magenta Make a little violet, add some black. A little bit of yellow.
I think parts of this area through here could be lightened up slightly. And over to the left over here, I think that I can darken that down even more so. I'm going to take some blue and white over here, add a touch of yellow, add a touch of black. Okay, so apply some of that on. It's going on there about the same color, but it should, because it's acrylics, dry a bit darker. Take a little magenta, a little bit of that same blue. Take some white, orange, and pink. Add a couple clouds floating through here. And I'm going to mix some of that darker brown color again. Add that to some of those clouds. Okay. Now I think I'm getting there ready to work around the sun. I'm going to get some medium. We'll get some white, add a little medium into that white. And I'm going to start by brightening up our spot where the sun's actually going to exist. Take a little bit of yellow, add it in. Taking out a liner brush right now, well, a round brush.
So I'm going to start to add some finer details down low. I'm going to take a lot of orange and yellow, mix it in, probably more yellow and white, some orange there I guess. And just start breaking up a lot of these areas through here with some finer lines. Those finer lines are going to just add some more realism. Take some more orange and magenta. A little bit of white. And there's going to be some broken up areas all the way back here, but not quite as bright as around that sun. So I'm not worried about the specifics of what these areas look like. I want the overall pattern to be right. I want the general idea to be right. Add a little white. But the specifics of these areas can be just kind of made up as you go. But you can see how that starts to really add add some life to these clouds doesn't take much so then as we move further away from the sun, we're going to get more of that, that light pink, like I was saying before. A little darker. And I think at this point, you know, I could keep going for as long as I feel like, and things in general, as I add more detail, could start to look a little more realistic, slightly better. It just depends. how much I really want to pull out of it. You know, it's all about keeping yourself happy while you're painting. So a lot of times I think many people could just quit right now and be totally satisfied. I don't think there's anything wrong with that.
a little magenta and yellow. Make more of like an orange. Use some of that medium. Keep that paint flowing. Some fine details here and there. No real wrong way to go about it at this point. adding some random just trying to mix it up I guess not not necessarily random but just making it a little more complex adding some cloud shadows here and there and then as I get real close to that that sun area what I could do is Make it a lot more orange, kind of brighter. See how brighter that is? That's that cadmium orange, you know, it's just hard to replicate. It's hard to mix. So I'm gonna go kind of overboard further out. It's gonna start to give on that greenish appearance. Like I was saying, sometimes it does, but then I can just add some red. Take some yellow. And that yellow is going to transition it to the white a little bit more nicely. I can see if I can still find some white here. Running low on white. Add some medium. Again, I think at this point, it's hard to just keep beating it and beating it with the acrylics. It's hard to get better than this with acrylics. At this point, oils are really gonna be suitable to 
if you want to take something like this to the next step, the next level. This is about all the acrylics Kino you know, can really do for you. Little white and magenta. I'm gonna create some of that muted pink again. A little bit of orange. And Hopefully transition this orange. Okay, so I might just kind of keep going on this. I might work some of uh, the, the upper area a little bit more. Um, clean up some of this area down through here. But in general, you know, that's, that's how I go about painting a sky like this. I think the, the important thing to understand here is that you know, I don't know how long we spent on this, a couple hours. A two-hour painting is always going to look like a two-hour painting. You know, I don't think you can really do much better in that amount of time. It's really hard to. I mean, I guess it comes down to just speed if you could just paint faster, I guess. But, you know, so many brush strokes are going to give you, you know, only such a result. And, uh, you know, I think if you were at this point, I would be very happy with this if you uh, could get your painting to look close to this. I'm going to keep on working through a little bit of the foreground. Very simple stuff. I'll include it at the end here. Um, but I think that's just about it.
So I worked a little bit more on the sky, kind of brightened up some of those pinks, some of the reds through here. And then also I wanted to soften up some of those clouds. So I spent a little time just softening up some of this area up here. And then I moved down to the area around the sun one more time and maybe just lifted up some of those yellows and oranges, just brightened up the area around the sun and then finished by just sort of roughing in a little bit of a landscape. Now, I'm, I'm going to keep working on this painting and I'm probably going to spend a lot more time on it, really take it to a place where, you know, it feels like you're actually there. And I'll probably add some sort of subject matter in the foreground, uh, some trees. I don't know. I've got a few ideas, but we'll just kind of see how, where it goes and how that goes. But I want to take this opportunity to sort of challenge you. You know, if you've been following along and you've got it to a place where, you know, maybe you're almost right here or, you know, you feel pretty good about it. Wherever you're at, I'd love to take this opportunity to extend the challenge to you and, and you know, really encourage you to come up with something on your own, you know, whether it be some buildings in the foreground or some wildlife, maybe just some trees silhouetted against that, that sun. I, you know, I think that's where we learn the most and it is just, experimenting, not really knowing what's going to happen, but just going for it anyway. So I want to encourage you in this video to, you know, if you've got it to this point, I, you know, I think you should really be proud of yourself. Or if you've got it anywhere close to this, you should be more than proud, more than happy with this painting. And, and just how I'm going to kind of continue on with my own thing. I'd love to see what you guys could come up with and, you know, see what you could could do yourself. So I'm challenging you today. Uh, let me know how it goes. Tag me on Instagram, send me an email. I always love uh, seeing what you guys come up with. And I think that's just about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to check out my free print giveaway. Like and subscribe if you love this video. And I will see you guys next time. <laughs>